my resolution of choice is 1080p. We need to talk about 1440p. Is 4K really a waste of resources or is 1440p blurry trash? I jumped on the 8K gaming hype train. 16Ks of soon to be gaming glory. But when making a game, how low can you go? Don't get me wrong, one, two pixels are doable, but they can't be much more than a reaction test. Nine pixels? Doesn't make it more interesting, you can't do much more than tic-tac-toe. So then, how many pixels do you need to make a game fun? I've been brainstorming a game idea and I think I got it. A top-down, multiplayer, wave survival game with base building. That is a mouthful. The resolution? 9x9. Nine nine. And to do this, I'll be using a lightweight engine, Godot. I installed and opened Godot for the first time, and I have to admit, I've never written code. All my experience is Unreal Engine Blueprints and some Bracky's tutorials seven years ago. The first thing I added was a tile map, which holds all the colors I need, and is less than 300 bytes of data. This tile map is every block, player, enemy, and all their damage states. And then I generated my first tile with code, which was sick. And looking back now that I'm editing the video, I feel silly for being impressed. And apologies for breaking the fourth wall here. Anyway, here's how I want the game to look. Yellow is the player, blue is water, green is grass, and the black was meant to be a mountain, but I don't know what I was thinking. I'm not very sure to start, so let's spin a wheel to find out. And it lands on player movement. Okay, so the arrow keys should now move the player, and technically it works, just need some tweaking. I've also cheated a little drawing the player, so I need to change that, and that is much better. And now there's movement, I need to figure out collisions. Tile maps in Godot have built-in collision, which is fantastic. All I need to do now is click this, and now I... Let's try that again. Okay, so I figured out Godot was crashing because the tiles are too small. If I temporarily bump it up to 4x4 pixels and then shrink it down again, I... So I bricked my project doing that. I probably should have realized that would happen. Thankfully, I didn't actually lose anything since I can just re-import the scripts. And we're good as new. So I can't do physics layers, which is a little disappointing, but the solution is quite simple. Separate the layers. If I have a layer that only has obstacles, I can check the tile the player wants to move to on the obstacles layer before allowing the character to move, and if there is something there, then don't move the character. And now you can see I have this little maze I made, and if you ignore that the player is invisible, you can see that it is working collision. All it does is check the square before moving to see if it can move. So now all I need to do is make the player, and also erase the previous location. And that is the basic movement, which means it's time to work on procedural map generation. Only one problem, I have absolutely no idea how to do that. My first attempts were to make a body of water, which took a bit of trial and error. I wasn't sure how to actually generate a random looking body of water though, so eventually I realized if I just pick a starting point, draw a square of water, and then pick a point in that square to draw yet another square, and repeat that x amount of times, it can make some pretty unique results. And technically, it could just keep placing in the exact center and only make a single square of water. But with a width of 3 and 10 steps, that's a 1 in 3 billion chance. I also made variables to control how big each square is, and how many times it places for me to play around with. I then repeat the exact same process for water on the other side of spawn, and we got some nice results going. I then also made some mountain spawn with some spaghetti code and crashed my computer. So I will need to remake that later. Oh, and I also made the stone spawn with a random damage state for more variety, and a square of grass for the player spawn area. Now I need a way to identify and destroy blocks. To find out whether a block is wood or not, I can just check the x-axis if it equals 6, and if the y is less than 4. Then to damage it, I just increment the y value, and if it is no longer less than 4, I delete the tile. Easy. I need to identify whether it is wood or stone so that only wood gives me wood as a resource for building and placing platforms on water. And now it is time for our first enemy. This guy will be very basic, he isn't blocked by any obstacles unless the player places it. The way the movement works is simple, I take that back, it is not simple, nor is it very interesting. So here's it working. Incredible. And here's a stress test. And now we can move on 
to building. Building was a little tough for me. With this amount of pixels, how do I make a functional build menu? And the answer is very basic. When the player presses the spacebar, it pops up what you can build around the player. If you select the move key relative to the item, like up for wall, it will select that item and hide the menu. Then the next move key you press will place the block in that direction. It's a little tedious I know, but I don't see any other way of doing it and I got used to it pretty quickly. A funny little glitch was that if you placed a block on an enemy, it would become that block. But that was an easy fix. You can also bridge out of the map by placing doors, but future me accidentally removed it when reworking some code and cannot be bothered to add it back in. I've been troubleshooting this problem for a while. See it says true because the menu is open and when the right key is pressed it will say unsafe. But it's doing it's doing fine right now. See it's true and then it does it. And you can see I can move around with the menu. And I've spent a couple hours uh, <clears throat> going crazy because of this problem. And it turns out was the controller doing it. This entire time, my controller has been just, I don't know, tapping right slightly. You can see, you can play on controller, and I don't know why, but it, it lets you move with the menu open. And Then I got bored of bug fixing, and with the help of my girlfriend, got some better colors going, as well as replacing the mountain tile with a different shade of grass, which really helps with the game's lackluster art. But back to building. I made it a little easier by letting you place blocks through blocks, which will be important for placing traps on the other side of walls to kill enemies, and this does help a little. And when you don't have enough wood, the item is the colour of an enemy. I know, it's a little confusing, but red is my only good option. And now that building is done, it's time for our second enemy type. This one's very similar, but instead of one pixel, it's two. A snake, if you will. But the snake is special because it does double damage, and killing one part isn't enough. You have to kill both segments to eliminate the enemy. This can be as simple as placing two traps through your wall, but if you only have one, it will chew right through your blockade. But after testing it a little, I wasn't very happy with the result, so I extended it to three segments, which made it much tougher. I also made it turn to stone when it dies, destroying any traps underneath it in the process, and potentially blocking off your escape. Other than all that, there's not much more to it. And after a quick enemy wave spawn script, and a tree spawn script, my game is now in a playable state. This isn't very fun. One thing I did get out of playtesting though, was how useless walls are. So now, when an enemy hits a wall, the wall will damage them back. Traps still deal more damage and last longer, but walls are more of a viable option now, as they are cheaper. And with that, it's time to add multiplayer. I found a video called Good O Multiplayer in 3 Minutes, and I learned everything I needed to know, which was fantastic. I've already spent 3 weeks on this game, so I'm glad it's going to be super quick and easy, and it's been an entire week, and I haven't made any progress. So for an entire week, I scoured the internet for anything Good O Multiplayer related, and eventually found out about remote procedure calls for RPCs. And the more I learned about RPCs, the more I learned that I didn't have a clue what I was doing. But I pressed on, testing and trying to get it to work in my multiplayer test project. And eventually, with my newfound knowledge of RPCs, I finally got the map replicating across clients. Here's my live reaction. Oh wow, yay. And after borrowing those functions to replicate everything else like player movement, mining and placing, I now have a seemingly working multiplayer game. I forgot that I was spawning the healing block on the same layer as the trap block, which meant that enemies weren't destroying them like they were before because they don't detect that layer. So I thought, instead of fixing that, heal blocks will also now heal enemies if they're on top of it. Way more interesting than just breaking it. I mapped a break menu and a repair menu to shift and control. So now you can either repair a block to full health with wood or destroy it for a full refund. Does this work? Uh, well, it seems to. The game's now quickly taking shape, and I can start adding some more finishing touches, like sound effects that play in game and a satisfying end screen. Each green block represents a wave you completed, and as the game is 9x9, it tracks up to 81 waves, which is an unrealistically high amount, as the game is balanced to be over much sooner. I've also made it so that you can type commands to change variables yourself. Want to change the river width? Just type river width, press enter, type the new number you want, 
Okay, maybe a bit too much. Look, working perfectly. There are also presets for how to play the game, difficulty presets, mini and mini challenge, which are just a very small map. But most importantly, type host to host a game and type join followed by an IP address to join the server. And with that, the grind is finally over. Here are some stats if you're interested. I've learned a lot making this, especially that when you have a visually simple game, overcompensating with complex game mechanics doesn't make it more fun. Game and source code are on itch if you want to try it or make fun of my code. Thanks for watching.